friends in the video session of class 10th science chapter 2 life process this is the third video session of this chapter so let's see what we are going to learn today in this so the learning objectives today are respiration breathing cellular respiration features of cellular respiration then types of cellular respiration then the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration how gaseous exchange takes place in plants, aquatic animals and terrestrial animals. So let's begin with the first topic that is respiration. Respiration is a very complex process which involves two main steps. The first step is gaseous exchange that is inhalation and exhalation is the first step. And then in the second step it is breakdown of the simple food in order to release the energy. Right? And these two steps are named as, the first step gaseous exchange is named as breathing and the second one breakdown of simple food in order to release energy. This is called cellular respiration. Right? Now let us see in detail about breathing and cellular respiration. So first let us discuss about breathing. Breathing is a kind of ventilation in which the organisms take the oxygen inside and release the carbon dioxide. If you see the diagram on the screen, you'll see in the first pic the, there is breathing in. That means the oxygen is inhaled inside the lungs. And in the second picture, it is breathing out. Breathing out means the carbon dioxide produced in the body is exhaled outside through the same route. Okay, So this is called breathing. Okay, Breathing is nothing but the inhalation of oxygen and the exhalation of carbon dioxide. Now let's move on to the next one that is cellular respiration. Cellular respiration occurs in the cells. Breathing was an outside process okay but cellular respiration occurs in each and every cell of our body and cellular respiration is nothing but the oxidation of the respiratory substrate. Oxidation means the burning of the food in presence of oxygen. And respiratory substrate means glucose here. Okay, So it is the oxidation or the burning of glucose in presence of oxygen which result in the production of CO2, water and release of a lot of energy in the form of ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. This is the molecule in which the energy is stored. Okay, If you see the diagram here, it is clearly shown that this is breathing means oxygen is taken inside and CO2 is going outside. Now once the oxygen comes inside the lungs from here with the help of blood it is circulated to each and every cell of the body. And on the other side if you see cellular respiration which occurs in mitochondria of each and every cell after burning of the food here in mitochondria CO2 is produced. Now this CO2 is again coming back to the lungs from where it is exhaled outside okay so these are the two steps breathing and cellular respiration which are together known as respiration okay breathing is also called extracellular respiration or external respiration okay now let's move on to the next slide that is features of cellular respiration features means the steps of cellular respiration how the cellular respiration occurs okay so Let's say the first point here that the simplest assimilated food is glucose. When uh, after digestion the food is absorbed in small intestine and from there with the help of blood it is circulated to all the cells. So that food which comes in all the cells is the assimilated food. And that assimilated food which is in our body in the simple form is glucose. Okay, And the oxidation of glucose just now we have studied the oxidation of glucose is nothing but called cellular respiration. Fine. Right? Now how this glucose which has reached the cells is further going to be broken. There uh, those steps we have to study now. So first let us see what is glucose. Glucose is a water soluble hexose sugar. Hexose word means that it consists of six carbon atoms fine, and it is water soluble. So it is called water soluble hexose sugar. Now. The breakdown of glucose in the cells involves many steps. There are many reactions which are involved in the breakdown of glucose. Now out of those, some of the reactions occur in the cytoplasm part of the cell 
and the remaining occur in the mitochondria of the cell okay now in the diagram here on the screen there is a cycle given that is uh, by photosynthesis the plants release oxygen which goes in the human beings or the other living organisms which is used for cellular respiration and in cellular respiration carbon dioxide is produced which is further utilized by the plants and again by photosynthesis they will release the oxygen so the cycle is going on in nature okay now let's see the next step what happens to the glucose now the first step of glucose is breaking of the glucose into another compound which is called pyruvic acid if you clearly observe the diagram on the screen you'll see here that this is glucose a six carbon molecule we know the formula of glucose that is c6 h12 and o6 now when this glucose which is a six carbon molecule breaks into a three carbon molecule which is named as pyruvic acid okay this is the first step which occur in all the living organisms and this breaking of glucose occurs in the cytoplasm okay and because glucose is breaking here that's why the name of the reaction is glycolysis okay so glycolysis is the first step in all the living organisms where the glucose molecule converts into pyruvic acid or pyruvate which is a three carbon compound okay and this reaction occurs in cytoplasm and one more important thing about this this step means conversion of glucose to pyruvic acid does not require any kind of oxygen that means this step is anaerobic in nature okay now let's see on this pyruvic acid now further here in the diagram it shows three uh, different arrows or three different reactions are shown here so let us try to understand what happens exactly here okay now see if pyruvic acid now what product has to be made out of this pyruvic acid depends on whether the oxygen is available or not fine that means the fate of the pyruvic acid or the destiny of the pyruvic acid is determined further by the presence or absence of oxygen so we have two cases now if oxygen is available or if oxygen is not available so let's discover first that if oxygen is not available then what happens to the pyruvic acid okay so i am just switching on to the previous slide to explain this so uh, see this in uh, if this pyruvic acid does not get oxygen that means if there is absence of oxygen then what are the products formed so here the products formed are ethanol carbon dioxide and energy right these are the products formed when pyruvic acid does not gets any kind of oxygen so that means the reaction occurs anaerobically fine and the example here is yeast means this reaction occurs in yeast yeast is a fungus and in all the plant cells also this reaction goes on that is ethanol co2 and energy are produced okay now this is total absence of oxygen now if there is lack of oxygen okay means that means the supply of oxygen is not sufficient that in that case the products formed are lactic acid and energy and this lactic acid is produced in the human muscle cells fine when there is insufficient supply of oxygen fine this is the case when we do a lot of exercise and we feel tired okay when we do a lot of exercise our breathing rate increases breathing rate increases so the supply of oxygen reduces and at that time the product formed is lactic acid which causes tiredness fatigueness in the body okay. and the third uh, situation is when there is lot of oxygen present presence of oxygen and in that case pyruvic acid breaks into co2 water and energy and here the energy released is in huge amounts right and this occurs in all the human cells when there is complete supply of oxygen and uh, especially to note here this this one this uh, presence of oxygen reaction occurs in mitochondria okay if oxygen is available the reaction will go on in mitochondria so let's switch on to the next slide and see here that if oxygen is not available pyruvic acid will break into either ethanol and water and here the example is yeast and lactic acid is produced if there is lack of oxygen okay and this occurs in human muscle cells 
and if oxygen is available then pyruvic acid will move on to mitochondria that means the further reaction will be in mitochondria and it will and the glucose will break, uh, sorry the pyruvic acid will break down aerobically and this will result in the complete breakdown of glucose with the release of co2 water and a lot of energy right so here it is to note that the energy which is released during respiration is stored in the form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate triphosphate that means three phosphate groups are present three phosphate links are present and if one of the phosphate groups detach from atp separates from atp then how much energy is going to be released 30.5 kilojoule per mole energy will be released okay so this is the molecule in which this is the form of molecule in which energy is stored okay let's move on to the next slide i hope this is clear to you all okay now uh, let's switch on to the next slide and see the types of cellular respiration here so cellular respiration is the oxidation of the glucose okay uh, and release of energy and it has two types that is aerobic and anaerobic okay aerobic respiration means when the a respiratory substrate burns in presence of oxygen when this is oxidation of the respiratory substrate or glucose with the help of oxygen then the reaction is called aerobic respiration and here the glucose breaks completely and co2 water and a lot of heat energy is released okay if you see the diagram given on it we can represent the uh, aerobic respiration in the form of word equation as well as chemical equation form so here you can see glucose plus oxygen gives a co2 water and energy and chemically uh, in equation form it could be written as c6h12o6 plus 6co6o2 uh, will give you 6co2 plus 6h2o plus energy and especially to note here that this reaction occurs in mitochondria of the cell now let's move on to the next one and see what is anaerobic respiration so anaerobic respiration means when the Uh, glucose has to break down in absence of oxygen then in that case the respiration is called anaerobic respiration here in this case the glucose does not break completely and the products formed are as we have seen earlier ethanol and lactic acid and sometimes little amount of co2 is also released and this uh, anaerobic reaction generally occurs in yeast ethanol is produced and the reaction is called fermentation reaction fine right? again to revise once see the diagram given on the screen here this is glucose uh, this is by the process of glycolysis it will break into pyruvate or pyruvic acid and further reactions depend whether oxygen is present or not if there is no oxygen products formed would be ethanol lactic acid and the reaction is called fermentation reaction and if oxygen is available this pyruvate or pyruvic acid will move on to mitochondria where further breakdown will take place and co2 water and energy will be released okay now let's switch on to the next slide and see the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration so in aerobic respiration the first case is that this uh, respiration occurs in presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration it occurs in the absence of oxygen aerobic respiration there is complete oxidation of glucose whereas in anaerobic respiration the glucose molecule is not completely oxidized products formed in aerobic are co2 and water and in anaerobic they are lactic acid and ethanol a lot of energy is released in case of aerobic which is 38 atp molecules and in case of anaerobic it is uh, very less uh, energy is released which is 2 atp molecules the anaerobic respiration occurs in plants and animals whereas anaerobic respiration occurs in bacteria and human muscle cells then uh, the last point is of reaction so both of the reaction could be written as okay now let's move on to the next slide and see how the gaseous exchange takes place in plants in plants the gaseous exchange takes place with the help of stomata okay stomata are the tiny pores which are present on the leaves now during day time what happens Uh, during photosynthesis oxygen is re released and this oxygen is used for respiration whereas at night when there is no photosynthesis utilization of oxygen and elimination of co2 occurs directly through stomata okay and in fact plants release co2 during night when there is no photosynthesis fine in the daytime when co2 is released out in respiration that co2 is used for photosynthesis but during night because photosynthesis is not present 
so co2 is released outside again with the help of stomata so in plants the transport of gases is the exchange of gases is through stomata and the transport of gases is directly through diffusion diffusion means this, uh, diffusion is the process in which the gases move from high concentration to low concentration so this is only the method by which the gases move in plants now switching on to the next slide exchange of gases in aquatic and terrestrial organisms see in uh, terrestrial organisms they are using the atmospheric oxygen whereas aquatic animals are using the oxygen which is present in water and if we compare oxygen is available more in air than in water so terrestrial organism directly use the atmospheric oxygen and inhale it inside the lungs right and then from the lungs blood will carry the oxygen to all the cells whereas in case of aquatic animals gills are present which will absorb the oxygen by the method of diffusion only so by diffusion the oxygen will move inside but there is a point to note that aquatic animals breathe faster than terrestrial one and the reason is that oxygen is present in less amount in water hence to get a continuous supply of oxygen aquatic animals have to breathe faster and faster and faster okay so this was the reason fine in the diagram here you can see the gills here and lungs of the terrestrial animals fine so let us now summarize what we have studied in the video session today so today we have discussed about respiration then breathing and cellular breathing is the external respiration and cellular respiration occurs in the cells okay so it is called internal respiration also then steps of cellular respiration that is glucose first breaks into pyruvic acid by the process called glycolysis and this step occurs in cytoplasm afterwards if oxygen is not present pyruvic acid uh, pyruvic acid will break into ethanol and water this reaction occurs in yeast and if there is lack of oxygen then lactic acid is produced by pyruvic acid and this reaction occurs in human muscle cells and if there is complete supply of oxygen then pyruvic acid will break into co2 and water and a lot of energy that is 38 atp molecules are produced then we have seen the different types of cellular respiration aerobic and anaerobic then like how the uh, gaseous exchange occur in plants that is by diffusion and then the exchange of gases in aquatic that is through gills and terrestrial that is through lungs okay so uh, this all we have studied today in the next uh, session we'll study about the human respiratory system okay till then stay safe and stay home